What's up my friends, welcome back! It's been a long time since I wanted to make this project and this is an RFID door lock and it uses an RFID module. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. So in this video I want to show you how to use this module and read the data from an ID card, one like this one, and use this card to open the door. So let me show you a small example of what this project could do. Ok guys, so let me show you how this system works. We've got a servo motor here and an LCD screen and a push button on the front side of the door. The LCD screen will send message to the users and the push button is used to close the door. Now I will use this unknown ID tag. As you can see the door won't open and I've got the SS denied message. But if I'm using the master card, the door will open and then it will ask me to add a new ID tag. Now if I place this master card once again, it will ask me to add the new ID. So right now I place the unknown ID tag. As you can see the new user is stored as user2. Right now if I press the push button the door will lock. The door is locked from the outside. I will use once again the unknown ID tag which now it's on the user list. As you can see now user2 has access granted. So there you go. That's how the system works. It has an RFID module inside that will detect the ID tag of these cards. We also have two push buttons on the back side of the system that will allow you to open and close the door. If you are on the front side of the door, just use the push button and close the door. Just use any ID card that is on the user list and open the door. Pretty easy, right? Ok guys, that was just a quick example of what this project could do. Just remember use my Q&A page and help others by answering the question if you know the answer and if you'd like to support my projects check my Patreon page as well, I will really appreciate that guys. So if everything is ready, let's prepare the module, let's see how that module works and build our door lock system. So let's get started! This project is brought to you by JLC PCB which is a manufacturer of quick PCB prototypes for more than 10 years and is the site that I use for all of my PCBs. Once designed, upload your Gerbil files on the GLC PCB site. Get a full review of the PCB, select your desired settings and order the PCB for amazing prices. I've ordered 10 of my prototype PCBs for only $2 and received those in 6 days. Crazy, right? So order your quality PCB and make your projects look a lot more professional. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is an RFID module that I've bought from eBay for very cheap. If you want one as well, check the link below in the description. Now I get the RF tag close enough to the RFID module. It detects it, reads the unique ID that the card has and then you could do any process that you want. In our case later, unlock a door. If we look close enough we can see that it has a circuit on one side and on the other one we can see a PCB coil antenna. We can easily see 4 widings starting from this point to this point and also a bunch of capacitors. Now if we look at the RFID card, at first sight it seems just like a random plastic card. But if I place it against light, we can see once again a coil antenna but also a tiny microchip here. So these two antennas gives us some sort of idea on how this communication will work. Let me explain it with a bit more of details. This will be our radio module here. And this the ID card. They both have some coil antennas. Which you all know that by passing current through a copper wire, they will create a magnetic field wave but also that a magnetic flux passing through a coil will induce current in that copper winding and that will result in a voltage drop. That's how we send data through air. A magnetic wave is created in the first antenna and that magnetic field will reach the ID tag antenna. The signal that the RF module sends is RF modulated and works at 13.6 MHz as you can see here. The module has a 27.12 MHz crystal oscillator but the RF signal is sent at 13.6 MHz. Ok, so we know now how a basic RF antenna works, but how this specific module work? Well, an oscillating radio frequency signal is created in the transmitter antenna. The receiver, the ID tag antenna in this case, will receive the RF signal. 
but this plastic tag has no battery or any kind of power. The card will have to send back the unique ID data, so how does that? Well, the RF signal that arrives at the receiver will first charge up a capacitor through a rectifying bridge, so we will get DC voltage. We name this capacitor power capacitor, since this will be the one providing power to the IC for a short amount of time. So now the internal IC of the tag card has power. At the input we have another capacitor, but way smaller and without rectifying circuit. This capacitor, since it's much smaller, will only smooth the radio waves so the control unit could understand the values. So, the output of this capacitor will be the data in. The output of this one, the power. And finally, we add a switch, connected to the data out pin. This data out will modulate the response signal, and it will use the power stored into the power capacitor and send another signal to the RFID module. That signal will carry all the data inside of the ID tag, and that's how we read the information on this plastic RFID card. So let's see this another time but faster. The RFID sends radio waves. Those waves charge up the power capacitor of an RFID card. Now the receiver is powered and starts to read the incoming data. Once the incoming data stream is finished, the receiver will respond with another RF signal containing the ID information. The transmitter module, once finished sending the signal, turns into listening mode and reads the data from the RF card. And that's it, that's how this works. I've made a small copper wire coil and connected it to my oscilloscope, and set a small code that will send data and try to connect to any RFID device. At first look we can't see anything, but if we go close enough we can see an oscillating RF signal at 13.6 MHz. I can see changing frequency, so I suppose this is not FM signal, so it must be AM or amplitude modulated. If I trigger the signal right in the communication time, we can see the modulated signal. So, if this is amplitude modulation, this low signal must be a zero and high must be a digital one or something like that. Or maybe the length of the FM signal oscillating represents the send data. I'm not entirely sure of the type of modulation, but with these two characteristics I could say that it's AM. So, now that we know how the communication works, let's connect the RFID module to an Arduino and start working with it. Use this basic schematic and connect to the Arduino. Be careful, the module works at 3.3 volts, so supply that voltage to the module. The rest of the pins are 5 volts compatible, so no worries. Connect the SPI pins which are CLAC, MOSI, MISO and a data pin. Now open Arduino IDE and go to the library manager. Here search for the MFRC522 library and install it. If you don't want to use the library manager, just download the library zip file from below, and then go to sketch, include library and add that zip library and select the downloaded zip file. Ok guys, once installed go to examples, MFRC522 and open the read ID example. I select Arduino Nano in this case, select the CAM and upload. Now open the serial monitor and set the baud rate of 9600. As you can see, when I place a tag card in front of the sensor, I get the unique ID code in decimal and hexadecimal values. Write these codes down in order to remember the code for each of your tags if you want. Ok, so now we know the ID of these two tags that come with the module. Using bits from this example code, I've made my own code that will detect the card. Check the ID and if the ID is on the user list, it will open the door with a servo motor. The servo motor is a 9G1 and it could be supplied directly with 5 volts from the Arduino since it won't draw too much current. This is the schematic for the final project. I've added an LCD in order to send notification to the user and 3 push buttons. The LCD uses I2C communication, so make sure you install the I2C LCD library that you could also find in the description below. One push button is for the outside closing the door, and the other two are for inside close and open the door. If you are outside of the room, you could close the door with the button, but open it only with the RFID tag. 
but if you are inside of the room, you could both open and close the door whenever you want using the push buttons. Finally, I've also added a buzzer for sound notifications. This will make the project less boring and add a little sound. I've designed a small case and 3D printed it using PLA material and my Anycubic i3 Mega printer. The link for the 3D case is below if you want to build the same project. It has holes for you to screw it on any surface, a place for the LCD screen, the RF module and a push button. Also, this another small case for the other two push buttons on the other side. By the way, coupons for this 3D printer and others are below in the description, so check those out and buy your 3D printer and help my workshop at the same time. I screw the LCD in place using M3 screws and nuts. I solder everything to the Arduino and also fit the RF sensor on the front side of the case. I supply 9 volts to the circuit and test if everything works. The servo motor is connected to digital pin D3. I first place the RF master card. The door opens. I push the button and close the door. Now I place the no ID card and the door won't open. But if I place the master card once again, the door will open and then will ask me if I want to add another ID. If I place the master card once again, it will synchronize another user. Once the countdown is done, place the unknown user ID in front of the sensor and it will be stored. Now I use the blue tag once again, but this time the door opens. You can only add new user using the master card. To define the master card, just use the IDs that you have wrote down before and go here in the code and change the hexadecimal values of the first user. This system could store up to 5 users, in my case, but if you want more, you would have to copy and paste some parts of the code and add more users. Now I know that the system works, so I place it on this fake door. The RF module and one push button on the outside and the other case on the other side. The servo motor will be our opening system. I place the card and the door opens and now I am inside of the room. I close the door with the push button from the inside closing. Now I want to get out, so I push the inside opening button and the door opens once again. Having multiple cards, you could give access to more people. To supply the system, you should use a transformer connected to the outlet because if you use battery, the system would be without power in maybe one day and the door will be closed forever. The code is very simple. Using these functions, we read the data from the RFID card. We check if the receive 4 bytes ID is the same as any of the approved users. If not, we print access denied and the door won't open. If the received 4 bytes are the master card, we open the door and then offer to add another user. If it's just a regular approved user, we only open the door. Please read all the comments in the code in order to understand more and visit my webpage electronews.com for more details. Upload the code and test if it works. Very important, make sure that you add the push buttons and pull up resistors just as in the schematic, otherwise those pins will be floating in free air and the signal will wobble around and open and close the door like a crazy system. So there you go my friends, now you know the basic of how the RFID system works. How we use RF signal and send data, how the non-power ID tag responds and how to use this kind of module and make a system for door opening. You could also add light notifications for open and close the door or maybe use this kind of project with something totally different than door opening. The choice is yours. You have the part list, schematics, 3D files and the codes below in the description, so make sure you check those out and also my webpage electronoops.com for more details and photos. If you would like to support my projects, check my Patreon page. I would really appreciate that guys. And by the way, thank you very much to all my Patreons. Well guys, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share the video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. Remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.